Okay, so when I did my Shampa arc review, I had stated that I thought the arc was entertaining, but I didn't think it was good, like, at all. I made a very, I made it very clear in that video, I find this arc entertaining, it's not good though. And that led to someone asking me, well, where do you draw that line? Where is, like, you know, where's the distinction there? And that was such a good question that instead of just answering them outright in the comments, I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna make this its own goddamn video because it's a topic worth talking about. Mostly because, like, I don't think a lot of people know what I mean by that. And it's also something that's gonna come up, and it has come up frequently in my videos where I'll talk about the quality of something. And I'll be like, yeah, you know, it was entertaining, I had a lot of fun, wasn't good, in fact, it was some cases fucking terrible. But I still found it enjoyable. Because, uh, to me personally, those aren't the same things. To a lot of people, I know it is the same thing. Um, if you enjoyed something, then that automatically equates it to good in their mind. And if you didn't like something, then obviously it must have been bad. Like, there's a reason that, that you didn't like it, it was bad. And to me, that's not the same thing. They're, they're completely separate things. And uh, when I said something that something was enjoyable, uh, what I really mean is that, you know, like, uh, like there are certain superficial elements to it that I personally enjoyed. Like, you know, it, like, it was just, it was silly, it was fun, it was energetic, it had, you know, like, cool shit going on in it, and that was enough for me to go, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun, that was, that was good shit right there, or that was fun shit right there, and, but, you know, at the same time, like, it could have all this cool shit in it, it could have all these things that I find really, really entertaining and really engaging, um, but it could be just really, at the same time, hollow and vapid and really not offer anything in terms of like its story, its characters, um, it could be awkwardly paced, it could be um, just you know full of plot holes or just narratively just you know like dropping plot threads and whatnot. You know like the story could be like a complete utter mess and just you know like the the, the characters and everything could just be just pfft. but it could just have like like in the case of uh, the you know the Shampa arc specifically, it has the uh, like the, the Goku hit fight. That fight is super fucking cool, you know, especially when Goku starts you know using the Kaioken with Super Saiyan Blue. But when you get right down to it, there isn't a whole lot there. It's a cool fight, but it's one a fight that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the whole the way they describe the the Tokitobashi, the time skip ability and the way that they're describing what's going on with Goku and his Kaioken, it just, like, the two, like, you know, what they're showing isn't what they're describing. So it's really, it's this weird narrative confusion. It's just, you know, they're, they're, there's just, it's like these two ideas, and they're showing us one and explaining another, and it's not the same thing. And it creates this weird, um, like, this kind of narrative dissonance between the two. So, you know, that was... You know, one big thing about it. Also, it's about like, you know, like the, the fights itself, there is really no stakes. It's just, you know, this tournament is, you know, Universe 7's Earth will get switched over to Universe 6, and that's it. That's all that's really going to happen. So there's like some stakes there and to this fight. And there's, it's a, it's, been with a fight, it's a fight with a character that has nothing to him. Like, he's pretty badass looking. He has, like, this really cool ability. He's super fucking strong. He's such a badass. He's so cool. There's nothing to him. We don't know jack shit about him. We know he's an assassin. We know he's a super fucking badass and the strongest guy in Universe 6. But that doesn't make him a good character. Being badass isn't a character trait. Well, I guess it's, it is a character trait, but it's not an interesting character trait. It's super easy to make a guy who's badass. But, like, what else does he have to offer? So... You have this character who's completely devoid of any kind of characteristics going up against our main character in a fight that has no stakes and in a fight that really um, just like doesn't make sense in the context of how they're explaining it and what they're showing. So yeah, you have a fight that is by all means should be terrible, but it has like the way they present it is in such a cool fucking fashion that it overcomes that hurdle and it's still engaging the watch. And to me, that's the, that's the separation there. It's, it's completely devoid of anything meaningful in terms of the narrative. But it's super fucking cool because, you know, seeing Goku combine these two abilities 
and seeing him, you know, overcome this thing, he, he basically looks like he's transcending time, and it's a really flashy fight, it's really quick, it has a lot of great visual moments to it, and it, it keeps you engaged, and it's super fucking awesome in that regard, but, you know, just being cool and awesome and entertaining, that, and that in my mind isn't good, that's just, oh, you, you, you did something really cool. That's not, you know, you didn't bring me anything engaging. There's, like, you know, there wasn't anything cool in terms of, like, the story or the characters, really. Or, you know, most of the characters, at least. You know, there's a few characters here and there that get some good moments. Kava, especially. Uh, Vegeta. You know, Goku really, you know, being, like, the big hero of, the, of that arc doesn't really get, um, like, like, a really, you know, good moment in it outside of the fight itself. Yeah, and it, I mean, you can argue that's like, well, it's a shonen action series. What the fuck are you expect? It's like you can have a shonen action series and still have something more deep and engaging. Like the Saiyan arc is an exact is an actual example. And if you want to use tournament arcs, uh, the the Uranai Baba arc that I use as an example, you know, it, it's pretty kind of vapid and silly up until you get to that finale, and that's this big, huge emotional moment where you get that payoff of meeting Grandpa Go or you know Goku being. Reunite, reunited with Grandpa Gohan. So you get this big emotional payoff from going through this kind of really silly tournament. And it was a tournament that, you know, at least utilized all of the characters that it had on hand at that point. And it was also a tournament that had a specific personal stakes to the characters. You know, they needed the Dragon Ball to resurrect Bora. You know, that had personal stakes for Goku, it had personal stakes for Upa. You know, and these were two characters that we had spent some time with, so we were personally invested in them. So, you know, there was payoff, there was, you know, there were things going on that, that, that elevated that arc and made it something a little bit more. Where here, it was just a bunch of cool fights, and really a lot of them weren't even that cool. A lot of them, the first few fights are honestly utter shit. So, you know, like the first truly great fight is the Magetta fight. And then you have uh, the Kava fight, and you know, for, like, for, pretty much from Megeta to to Hit, like those are all great fights. But then you get into the issue of these fights don't really make sense in the context of what of like what's going on here. Because like, oh, like they're arbitrarily holding back their powers, and you know, yeah, like it's a cool fight, but it's a fight that doesn't make sense. Seeing uh, Vegeta struggle so hard against Megeta, that doesn't, you know, like you know that, you know that. It's cool, it's a great fight, but when you think about it, it's like, he could just go SSGSS and knock his ass out completely out of the ring and just be on to the next fight. And, you know, once again, you get into the issue of like, oh, well, it'd be a boring tournament. Well, that's not the point here. I'm saying that, like, you know, they, they, they didn't build, like, you know, these fights in a way to where they, they had, like, legitimate tension to them. You know, they're cool to watch, but, you know, they don't have, like, you know, any good character moments or good emotional moments, um, except for Kaba. Kaba's fight, you know, like, you know, they, they really did some stuff with his character and Vegeta's character that kind of elevated that. But that's one fight out of several, and it's a whole tournament. So, and it's not even like, you know, like the, the, the end cap to the tournament. It is a fight in the middle of the tournament, or like, you know, a little further near the end of the tournament. But it wasn't the final match of the tournament or the big climactic fight. So, you know, it, you know, where it ends is just, it kind of just a little, it falls flat in terms of its narrative. And that to me doesn't make a good story. Like, you can't just have a tournament with these characters that we know nothing about. Um, you, you barely develop any of them. Like, you're really the only characters that got any kind of, you know, Frost gets a backstory, Kappa gets some development. That's it. The rest of these characters just just flat lines the entire time. It just it, it just kind of creates this really bland arc in terms of its narrative, in terms you know, like there's no interesting themes going on, there's no really great character moments sprinkled throughout, or it doesn't end on a really great moment or note. And but that doesn't keep it from being entertaining to me. You know, like I said, they had cool flashy fights. I got to see these characters that I have this long history with have a couple of cool moments. Like Piccolo's fight, it's anime like shit, it's choreographed like shit, but on a conceptual level, it was really interesting. And that was enough to make me enjoy that. You know, 
So you know, it, it was it was a lot of substance, no flash, and then the rest of you know, and then a lot of the other things are a lot of flash, no substance. And flash can be entertaining, uh, but without the substance, I can't call it good. And that's where I make that disconnection there. That you know, that's why that arc is entertaining, not uh, good. Like, I feel the same way about the Majin Buu arc. Like, there are plenty of parts of the Majin Buu arc that are super entertaining and super cool, but the arc itself is a complete and utter fucking clusterfuck. And I will, I like, promise I'll do one of these vlogs where I talk about that more extensively. And it isn't just limited to Dragon Ball or anime or even, you know, just tell shows. Like, movies are the same. Like, everything. Every piece of entertainment. Like, I can find it really entertaining, but not specifically find it good. Um, there are a lot of, like, old 90s movies that are, like, they're cheesy as shit and they're so fucking retarded, but, you know, they're terrible. They're, they're terrible fucking movies. But they're just so ridiculous that I find them enjoyable. And they're really entertaining. I view them as shit movies, but that doesn't keep me, that doesn't stop me from enjoying them. You know, and, yeah, and I feel like if more people made that, that, that distinction people who would probably argue a lot less on the internet. But, you know, that's just kind of where I stand. And honestly, also, the, the reverse is true. There are things that I'm like, that was a quality film. I don't like it. You know, uh, The Hobbit is an example. Like, I think it's a very well-made film. Uh, I think it's boring as shit. Um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is the same way. It had a lot more going on in it because it's three books. But... It's fucking boring as shit to me. They're, they're, they're three well-crafted films. It's not a bad story. It's not like it has bad character moments. But fuck, I find it boring as hell. I think it's a good movie. I just don't fucking like it. It's fucking just... It bores me to goddamn tears. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, if you want to, like, you know, extend that beyond, you know, movies, but also, like, uh, Battle Angel Alita, one of Agro's favorite manga. I think it is a fantastic series. Fuck, I hate the main character so much that I can't read it. I couldn't finish that manga. Like, and that's something very specific to me. Everything was so good around it, but that character was so bad that it was unenjoyable. Like, it, it completely killed my enjoyment of the series because the main character was such a fucking cunt. So there you go. There's my explanation. You know, like, you know, to me, entertain, uh, entertainment and quality are not the same thing. You know, you can be cool, you can be badass, but without that substance, you, 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 there's just not enough there for me to actually call it good or warrant calling it good. And there you go. Hopefully I explained that well enough. Hopefully it wasn't too rambly. And hopefully you guys got a little bit better insight in, like, what I look for in entertainment and, you know, just, you know, what I find, like, what I find enjoyable and what I find to be actually good. So whenever, like, I'm being super critical of an episode of Super... You know, I can still be totally enjoying it, but there are things that are just completely hampering the story and just really just dragging it down and taking what could have been really great and just making it mediocre or okay or just eh. But, you know, I can still enjoy it overall. So anyway, there you go, guys. And yeah, hopefully I, I made myself clear. You understood what I was saying. Hopefully this wasn't too rambly and confusing. Until next time, guys, Zeon, out.